A sound from space? When up there in space, no one can hear you talk, laugh, or scream. Or at least that's how the saying goes. People can't hear anything in space due to its condition. Still, if you have the right conditions, like the hot gas that surrounds the black hole located at the center of Perseus, space can be quite noisy. That's the galaxy cluster 250 million light years away from us. Researchers caught an actual sound of space, waves rippling through the plasma gas in Perseus. They first realized black holes generate acoustic signals in 2003. But this is the first time they brought these signals to the human ear. And wow, this sounds terrifying. Canyons filled with liquid on Titan. Almost a decade ago, NASA spacecraft discovered deep canyons on one of Saturn's moons, Titan. They're about a half mile wide and they kind of look like the Grand Canyon, but they're filled with liquid hydrocarbon. This was the first time we came upon evidence of canyons and channels filled with liquid on Titan. Our solar system is full of small particles and bigger rocks that circle the sun, the same way as planets. Sometimes it happens, some of them change trajectory, which is why falling pieces of debris strike the planets. Most of the meteorites and comets originate in our solar system. Some from the asteroid belt between Jupiter and Mars, while others come from the Kuiper belt, that's located beyond the orbit of Neptune. But five years ago, scientists found something unusual, a red, elongated floating space rock called Oumuamua. It could be more than 3,000 feet long, but its size still wasn't the most impressive part. It was the first interstellar object we saw passing through our solar system. It means it formed and came outside of it. It was traveling way faster than asteroids and comets from within our solar system. No one knows where this weird object came from. Many, many years ago, when it started its journey and sailed away from its parent planetary system, the stars weren't in the same position as they are today, so it's hard to pinpoint where Oumuamua ran away from. The rock could have been on its journey for billions of years. Solar Termination Events Our sun is not just a flaming ball of gas we see in the sky. It's actually a pretty complex network of towering plasma fountains, magnetic fields, and blobs of unusual matter 500 times bigger than our own planet. And then there are solar termination events. When it comes to its activity, our sun goes through a natural cycle of troughs and peaks. Approximately every 11 years comes the time when the sun is more active than in other periods of the process. As the cycle goes to the end, there are fewer emissions and sunspots. That's because magnetic fields are weakened at that point and they collide along the sun's equator. This results in enormous tsunamis of plasma. They pass across the solar surface for weeks. These are the most powerful storms in our solar system. They twist, snap, and lash out into space and seriously affect our power grid. As they wake, large spots start to form on the sun, close to strong magnetic field lines. Usually, that's when the cycle begins all over again. No one still knows why exactly they form. Also, we're not sure if this only happens at the end of the cycle, and knowing more about this could help us prepare for raging solar storms better. Tsunamis on Mars It appears the shorelines under the Martian surface formed because of two enormous tsunamis. Mars has something that's probably the longest landslide in our entire solar system. The rocks rolled down the mountain probably billions of years ago. They fell into the water and caused a gigantic wave that rushed across the Martian landscape. As the tsunami was getting bigger, the rocks scraped all along the solid ground beneath them, and these sandy waves left their prints on the shoreline, not so close to Olympus Mons. That means it's possible the waves traveled a couple of hundred miles this supports the theory that Mars once had an ocean hidden below its dry desert surface. Sure, Oumuamua was cool because it was the first object we've seen coming from outside of our solar system. It's past us now, so it's not possible to study it anymore. 
But something else came from outside our solar system after Oumuamua, a comet called Borisov. It came with a tail over 100,000 miles long. Teams got the first images of Borisov in 2019. A bright white glow was surrounding it. And that was one of the first signs where scientists realized this comet wasn't from our solar system. They tried to collect as much information as possible because they remembered how quickly Oumuamua got away. Borisov came from a freezing place as cold as the Kuiper Belt. One theory says it may have originated around a red dwarf, which is the most common type of star in our galaxy, the Milky Way. But unfortunately, Borisov was also very fast. So fast that they only managed to see it a couple of weeks before it passed by our planet. By now, it's almost out of our solar system. Finding new planets is always such a thrill, just like it was in 2017, when a group of researchers discovered Super Earth. It's an exoplanet, which means it orbits a star outside of our solar system. This one has a mass almost three times that of our planet, and it's only 21 light years away. It orbits M dwarf star, and it manages to make a full circle in only two weeks. So that's how long the year is on this planet. It's closer to its star than Mercury is to our Sun. But M dwarf stars are cooler than our Sun, so it's possible this planet still has water. Super Earth is generally a term for planets that are lighter than ice giants such as Uranus and Neptune, yet more massive than Earth. They can be made of rock, gas, or even a combination of both. The one they discovered in 2017 is especially interesting because this type of planet can also hold some form of life. Leroy Chow is an astronaut who commanded the International Space Station back in 2005. This one time, during his final spacewalk, some pretty unusual lights caught his eye. It looked like five lights flying near him. They were in the shape of a pyramid since one light was a bit further ahead. Chow immediately called one of the crew members who was also out there at the same time taking a spacewalk. He asked his colleague if he saw the flying objects, but apparently he didn't. Researchers were intrigued by this story, so they examined satellite images to see if that was the thing Chow saw. One of the options was that Chow had seen fishing boats off the coast of South America. With bright lights, they wanted to attract squid. But since it was twilight time, the rotation of our planet may have made them appear to fly by. Neutron stars slamming into each other. After a massive star comes to its end in a strong supernova explosion, its core falls apart. Then it forms the densest form of matter we know about in the whole universe, called a neutron star. In only a couple of the first few seconds after a regular star begins transforming into a neutron star, the energy there is equal to the total amount of light all stars in the universe emit at least the part we can observe, which is still a lot. It's hard to determine their real size, but picture it this way. The length of Manhattan with 1.5 times the mass of the sun. If a star here were any denser, it would just collapse and form a black hole. Scientists captured two of these stars colliding a couple of years ago, and such impacts are extremely powerful. They create gravitational waves that lead to a ripple in space-time but they produce heavy elements like platinum and gold. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.